So attendees are going to be able to describe the benefits of community water fluoridation and safe drinking water. You will learn and understand and be able to share with your patients about the importance of oral health and fluoride, especially for pediatric patients. And you'll be able to address the status of community water fluoridation. Thank you all so very much for having me. I'm Johnny Johnson. I'm a pediatric dentist. Uh, disabled because of a bicycle accident, but uh, God left my mouth intact and I am still doing dentistry, only I am helping others to work in the area of community water fluoridation to help them to keep it in place, to restart it if they have stopped and to promote it. Uh, we formed a 501c4, five of us did healthcare workers back in 2014. Um, we began to fight the uh, battles that are essentially anti-vax, anti-fluoridation, same groups joined together to hip and the same, uh, same exact types of claims. If you, you substitute the word vaccination today, when I say fluoridation and close your eyes, you'd swear you were hearing the same, <clears throat> excuse me, the same presentation. So my county back in 2011 uh, in Florida, Pinellas County, Clearwater area is the uh, most com most commonly recognized uh, name, Tampa area. They stopped, uh, the county commissioners decided to stop water fluoridation, not over science. It's never over science. It was political. And they stopped it to over 700,000 people. And I was very, very angry to uh, say the least. I'll be nice and polite this morning. Uh, I stepped up and led a group that worked to um, basically get two of the four that voted against it out of office because they would not change their minds. And two people stepped up and ran. And 15 months later, after it was cut off, we had 700,000 people, over 700,000 back on fluoridated water. And that kind of ended my, yeah, my, well, my career was ended in 2009 from practicing, but it stepped me into the door of something new, which I was totally uh, not not wanting to do. I have ADHD with anxiety disorder and a little underlying depression, and I would never get up and speak in front of even my colleagues. I would break out and sweat, but that got me that got me served uh, a good dose of anti-anxiety medication. <laughs> so now we I I head up this uh, nonprofit group. We don't take a penny for what we do, and we help every community in the country as well as work with others around the around the uh, world to help keep fluoridation uh, schemes, as they say in the UK, in place. So without uh, going into anything further, I really want to go through how it is great in the way of communications to think about fluoridated water, which we want everyone to have. You have a huge advantage in North Dakota that you are almost completely fluoridated in your community water systems. So one thing to kind of keep in mind is we want people to drink tap water always. Now, there are benefits of safe drinking water, and that is that it's highly regulated by the EPA. Bottled water has become the largest single growing uh, industry in the soft drink arena. Pepsi, Diet, uh, Coke, and the rest of them are flat, but their water sales are, are skyrocketing. The differences between uh, tap and bottled water is that bottled water is considered a food and the Food and Drug Administration controls it. They do not have strict controls like the EPA does. And they even have a precaution on the EPA site that people with special precautions, immunocompromised, transplants, so on and so forth, should not uh, drink bottled water, which a lot of physicians and others don't on a regular basis say so. Um, and I have one very particular one who was the editor of JAMA Peds when they they published the uh, study last year, I think it was, on uh, IQ and water fluoridation being uh, associated, which was a horrible study. And the, uh, the editor said, well, I wouldn't have my wife drink it if she were pregnant to tap water with fluoride. I would have her drink bottled water. And I, not even thinking, hey, this is not good for a lot of people. So I'm not going to go any further because cryptosporidium is a, uh, a contaminant in bottled water that is not highly controlled like it is in tap. Next.
people use bottled water coming from other countries, especially, which we get a lot of immigrants coming that their own tap water is so horrible. And you've heard of Montezuma's Revenge. If you've traveled abroad, drink the bottled water. Well, when they come to this country, they think the same thing, that it's safer than tap water. That is a huge hurdle to overcome. And it is one that we, we want them to drink the, uh, the tap water because it has fluoride in it, 75% of our country uh, that are on community water systems. However, they're thinking that, tap, that bottled water is better. Bottled water for a couple of reasons we don't want to see used, like I had said on the previous slide. Plus, there is so much pollution from bottles that they are filling our landfills. And it is estimated by 2055, there will be more bottles plastic bottles in the ocean than fish. That's horrible. Also, speaking of controls, have you ever heard of mold growing in tap water? No, you don't because it's disinfected. Kroger had a huge recall a couple of years back because tap the uh, bottled water for infants started tasting bad and mothers complained and they found that there was mold growing in it. Huge, huge recall. Another reason to say, don't use bottled water, use tap water. Next. Again, tap water, purest water available on the planet. And our country is known for the high uh, requirements to meet EPA strict standards. It is constantly monitored at every water plant. Now the proper term is not opposed or anti, it's, it's hesitant. hesitant hesitancy to use water from other uh, sources other than bottled. Now that's hesitancy to vaccinations as well as to water fluoridation from people who oppose it. Next, I kind of smile because that's one of those politically correct uh, terms to use now. Next slide. Fluoride is a naturally occurring mineral in our Earth's crust. It's the 13th most abundant minerals and al almost all water naturally contains fluoride at a level that is typically too low to prevent cavities. In the ocean, it has fluoride at 1.4 parts per million as the highest level naturally. And it is twice that which is in, uh, recommended for flu fluoridated water of 0.7 parts per million. This first part is so critical in understanding fluoridation and where it came from. It didn't start in 1945 by somebody throwing shovelfuls of this additive into the water just to see what would happen, which opponents to fluoridation like to make it sound like. <clears throat> Excuse me, next. A dentist that graduated from dental school moved out west to Colorado Springs, Frederick McKay in 1901. What he began to see in his patients that had lived there all their lives or came in as infant was this brown stain on the teeth that really couldn't come off with cleaning the teeth. And he called his professors and they were like, uh, you, yeah, Frederick, that's right. No, we don't, we don't know what that is. We've never seen it. We think you're kind of daydreaming. Well, he traveled to other, other cities around Colorado Springs and maybe he saw some of it there as well. They had the water that um, they had the water that they all commonly drank was the only common denominator. And they tested the water, wasn't anything in there that they could find that was different than anywhere else. Well, the observation that was key that he made was that in 1901, that very few of, few of these people had cavities that had these brown stains. Again, a phenomena that didn't make sense, but nonetheless, he, he was persistent. Continue our next slide, please. He finally in, in, uh, influenced the, uh, it was the, uh, it was called differently at the time, but it, um, it had come to me. <laughs> it, it is the, uh, it's with the National Health Service, but it's the uh, group that looks at what's going on in an area. Uh, uh, public health service, there it goes. I'm not a public health trained person. Well, they got the public health service to finally engage. And sure enough, they saw those same brown stains and they saw those same low cavity rates. And that was just unheard of in 1901. They began to travel around and saw some of the other areas that had brown stains. And Dr. 
Dr. McKay had actually gotten one of the other communities to switch to a different water source. And then the kids began to grow up without brown stains on their teeth. So they knew there was something in the water. So Dr. Dean was the one from the public health service that took off in his car, began to go looking at cities around Illinois where they were based. And they began to find areas, pockets that had very low cavities and good looking teeth. Again, water was a common denominator, but they didn't know what it was causing it. Next. Johnny, I'm gonna interrupt for one second because there is a question related to what you're speaking to right now. Can you yes. talk for a brief moment about the water that comes through your fridge filter? Does that remove the fluoride? How does that water work? What's your recommendation? No, uh, free, thank you, great question. Fridge water is, well, number one, it's preferable to children so let them drink it. It is filtered by a carbon filter, which does not remove fluoridation. Uh, the only filters that remove fluoride from the water are reverse osmosis units, which are very highly effective, about 87% at removing the fluoride in the water. Uh, also, the other one would be whole house carbon filters, uh, which cost in the five to $10,000 range. People that go way overboard will, will use those. Um, in some places, they may need to go way overboard, but far, primarily people would use something like that to filter out fluoride because they're so against it. Um, that's a good question. Yeah, the Brita filters, things like that, pure filters, the pitchers and all, their little filters even say on it that they do not remove fluoride. So those are okay to use, but the fridge one is perfectly fine. No problem whatsoever. Was that the only one? Yes, continue now. Thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. Well, the, the idea came that we should look at a, uh, a trial uh, because what happened was in 1930, a uh, fluoride probe was invented and they went back and measured Colorado Springs water and they had two to 12 parts per million of fluoride in the water. And in the cities that had good looking teeth with very few cavities, it was one part per million. So they arrived at the idea, hey, this is something in too much of a concentration can give you something that you don't want to see. People were healthy, no problems with them. But at a certain level, like my Eliquis that I had to go on because I had a hip replacement and I'm on a blood thinner now through pulmonary embolism, I'm okay but uh, it is at low levels, blood thinners are used to keep me alive. At high levels, it used to be used for rat poison. And I'm not talking about 80 milligram uh, uh, of fluoride in rat poison, as well as, as my daughter uh, told me, very high levels of vitamin D. Well, they decided that looking at these cities, the difference was two to 12 parts per million, versus one, one gave you good looking teeth. So mother nature was set out to be replicated in 1945. Four paired cities in US and Canada had, again, you have natural, natural fluoride levels in your water, usually too low to prevent cavities. So they had four cities that tested, that adjusted their water to one part per million, one milligram per liter, and four that were controls. Grand Rapids, Michigan, you may hear, is the first one that began water fluoridation in 1945, and Muskegon was its control city. Within just a very few years, the cavity rates dropped in 12 to 15 year olds by 60 to 70 percent. Now, this is something that has been observed. It, it was seen that the health of people, and was it was studied that the health was no different whether you had low levels or levels that were higher, and the cities, uh, the control cities, three of the four of them jumped off and said, we want it now. Well, listen, this is the same thing as penicillin. If you were treating half of a, your room of people with penicillin that were sick and the other half uh, not with penicillin and the half without died, and we knew penicillin was effective and it was safe, you cannot, cannot withhold it from others. So four of them jumped, or three Three jumped off, and the fourth one stayed in through the entire 15-year uh, study. Next. Uh, 
Again, that history is important because when you're speaking with your patients about fluoride and fluoridation, this is something that they don't understand, they don't know. And when they find out that number one, it's in your water naturally because the water comes up through the rocks in the earth's crust and it picks up that 13th most abundant mineral, it's picking up fluoride as it comes to the, uh, to the surface or in wells. Number two, it is something that we just discovered quite by accident in 1901 and we just replicated mother nature. Now people go, okay, you know, these are, we're looking at kids benefiting, no adults benefit as well. When you look at the oral health uh, benefits of community water fluoridation, number, the most common chronic disease of children and of teens is cavities. It is an infectious and, and uh, transmissible disease. And it is a disease process. It's more common than asthma, obesity, and diabetes. If you've ever had cavities like I have growing up, I'm 65, finally able to say I'm a senior citizen. It causes severe toothaches. You can't chew well. It focuses on the pain. You can't, if you've ever had intense pain or toothache, you know that you can't concentrate in school or at work, that that really is overwhelming. And you end up going to the dentist and a lot of people end up going to the emergency departments, emergency rooms, for palliative treatment. It is a predictor. And when I had cavities as a kid, darn sure I was going to have them as an adult. I was more prone. It takes a ton of money to fix. And people actually die of dental abscesses. And that is because this young lady on the left has not been beat up. She has an abscessed molar. And that abscess has become systemic. And it has spread to her cellular planes of her face. When that left eye starts to close, she is close to getting that infection through her venous plexus, which has no valves, and into her brain. And people die every year from dental infections. May not be labeled that. It may be labeled uh, sepsis. And down on the toad uh, tags, uh, several spots are dental abscess. And the two folks on the right are just two examples. One was Diamante Driver in Maryland that made uh, history when he was, it was brought to light nationally. The other was a Russian truck driver that was traveling uh, from one coast to the other and developed an abscess and ended up being hospitalized and died of, of a generalized infection. Next. Very sad. Oral health also can be can cause systemic health implications. Again, I talked this facial cellulitis. Uh, you can get facial cellulitis called Ludwig's angina that is under the chin and in the floor of the mouth as well, which can, can obstruct the airway. Systemic infections, as I spoke about. Diabetes has a strong evidence uh, that oral infections, oral health, from periodontal disease, which is not from cavities, it's a separate disease, but there's a strong causal relationship between diabetes and periodontal disease. There are is emerging studies and research that shows that it's related to, <clears throat> excuse me, coronary artery disease, obesity, uh, preterm labor, uh, pregnancy outcomes, rheumatoid arthritis, and also some cancers. Next, please. It figures your mouth has got so much bacteria in it, it's causing a lot of impact in the rest of the body. Oral health by water fluoridation, is it still necessary in this day and age? Because we have it in toothpaste. Products that are produced in fluoridated communities like your, your soft drinks uh, and foods and things like that are processed with fluoridated water. Well, we don't get the 60 to 70% reductions anymore because we are getting kind of a halo effect from communities that produce our products. But when you begin water fluoridation in a community, you reduce cavities beyond those already reduced by fluoridated toothpaste by an additional 25%, both in adults and children. Adults actually benefit more than children. And when people look sideways at me in a meeting, I'll say, look, we're adults longer than we are kids. And as adults, we have gum recession as we get older. And that is something that definitely allows the roots on our teeth to get cavities 
because the root surface is softer and is a leading cause of uh, tooth plus in adults and the elderly. Next. Well, people like to say who are hesitant to fluoridation, well, the studies are 75 years old and that is old research and people do not, the EP or the CDC and all these other health organizations that back it are embarrassed to say it doesn't work any longer. I'm gonna give you just a little bit of, of the opposition's points. Well, facts remain that research is continuous and ongoing. And recent research even shows that when you begin water fluoridation, you are reducing cavities and it shows up first in kids in the greatest amounts. Take for instance, a, a third grade class, this was done in North Carolina, a third grade classroom of 30 kids in a fluoridated community. These kids would have 39 fewer cavities in their, each year than their counterparts who did not have water fluoridation. Again, nine less cavities in that 30 classroom of kids. And I'll give an example similarly in an area that it was stopped. That's huge. Next, please. Opponents will like to tell you that water fluoridation is not effective. It does not, it is not needed. Even the CDC admits that it works primarily topically on the, on your teeth through toothpaste. So why do we need to ingest it? Do we ingest suntan lotion? No, we put it on our surface and that's where fluoride works primarily. But we know primarily is followed by secondarily that what is the real benefit? Well, there have been cessations, which I thank the Lord they happened only from the standpoint of we have hard and fast evidence now of what goes on when, can, when fluoridation is removed. And again, it is never about the science. The science is crystal clear. The overwhelming body of evidence that shows that cavity reductions from fluoride in fluoridated water is effective and it is safe. Juneau, Alaska, the capital of, of Alaska, had fluoride fluoridated water ceased due to a vote by the, the city council. Their cavities in those kids after fluoridation was stopped, they had a uh, um, Medicaid population that they were able to look at data from. Juno is a fly-in, fly-out, or ferry in ferry-out community, so it was very stable. Jennifer Meyer was a researcher. Those kids had a one additional cavity-related procedure per year. Again, take 30 kids in the classroom before and after fluoridation. The ones after fluoridation would have 30 more cavities the next year than their counterparts. Calgary, Alberta, Canada, the one that stopped. Again, vote by the, the, their council. Cavity rates in the first three years shot up 146% compared to their sister city, Edmonton, which was constantly fluoridated huge increase. Windsor was one other one. This was based on public health data, your surveillance, and that's such an important part of what you do. They used public health surveillance and came back five years later to the city council and that who asked them to do this, and they showed in a five-year period in second graders that they had a 51 percent increase in cavities and they kept adult data as well, and it was almost identical. Stopping it makes a huge, huge difference. Next, please. This is the one that I was just talking about in Calgary. So you have, it was under the age of seven that the, the, this was very, very evident because those were the kids that had no fluoridated water growing up. At age three, for instance, a classroom of 30 kids would have one more cavity. Next year, they had two more cavities. So those 30 kids would have 60 more cavities than their counterpart. By age five, the next year, 90 more cavities than their counterparts. You have to resolve through keeping water fluoridation in place. Next, please. Oral health and community water fluoridation is hugely impactful against early childhood care 
varies. And that is, as you heard in a previous presentation by Vanessa Bob, that a childhood caries involves numerous teeth, both in the front and back teeth. And that is something that when you fluoridate the water, and this is where water operators need to be pat on the back for both supplying a safe drinking water in this era that we're in right now, where we have filling infrastructure, they work their tails off to keep us in safe drinking water. When they fluoridate the water, they drop cavities by two thirds to three quarters in children having to go to the operating room to be treated under general anesthesia for full mouth rehabilitation. They prevent more cavities by fluoridating the water than any of us can do in our entire lifetimes. Next, please. Here's an example of a child that had early childhood caries, cavities, use cavities, I'm sorry. Use cavities, keep your language very simple. It's not caries, it's not decay. Use a word that you stick with. We have to communicate with adults, decision makers, and, and politicians uh, the same. We have to use a third to fifth grade communication level. So I apologize for using the word caries. I have to slap myself for that one. When that water operator began adding fluoride to the water, this child, this type of situation is reduced by two thirds to three quarters of them having to go to the operating room for full mouth rehabilitation. Now, these other pictures are just horrific. We have created a dental handicapped patient by looking at putting crowns in their teeth, taking out teeth prematurely, losing space for the permanent teeth to come in. We have created a lifetime full of problems that fluoridating the water absolutely make a huge impact on. Next, please. North Dakota and your water fluoridation, there are areas in which you can get your information. And I will tell you that it is not as straightforward at this point as I would like to say it is, uh, but I will walk you through how to get that information because as, as providers in, in the healthcare setting, we have to know if our patients are on a fluoridated system or not, and actually how much fluoridation is in your water in your community. Uh, in North Dakota, your annual water quality reports that you get, or you can go online and look up, when a community is fluoridated, they don't have to necessarily report the fluoride levels in that water. And that is a rule that's in the state called the Century Rule. It was instituted years ago, and just in that simple thing right there, you will not be able to necessarily see what your water fluoride level is. There's a couple of tools. Next slide, please. A couple of tools that will help you get through this. Your state, number one, is ranked fifth in the U.S. for the number of people on water fluoridation, and that is admirable. 96.5% of people on what well, community water systems are getting fluoridated water every single day. This is information from the CDC that you can get and the, all these slides, almost everyone has a hyperlink to the information that you can get. And that this latest data was from 2018. Next slide, please. Now they have a public facing website, the CDC does, that's called My Water's Fluoride. Now they have county level, level data. Uh, and this is from North Dakota. You can see your counties there. You can click on your county and then you can go through and see which communities are on that water system in your county. And it will tell you whether it's fluoridated or not. You can actually click through that city and see what the actual level is. Now, there's this downside to this and we're working to get this taken care of. Some states report all the re all reports that they're allowed to report. Uh, on my water's fluoride that is in the CDC's base web, uh, website base called WAFER, just water fluoridation reporting system. Some states choose not to do all of that uh, reporting on this my water's fluoride. Um, I'm working on that with you in North Dakota. We're going to, as healthcare providers, we need to know exactly how much is in it. Next slide, please. I ran this report of fluoridated communities, you can run the report of who has fluoridation in it and who doesn't. 
Now, if a community is fluoridated, all of the yeses you see in the next to last column, they put the level at 0 0.70. That's not the level that is there in the city. That is a level that's put there because that's the optimal level. You would have to go back and click through some of those other uh, points from the county level than the city level to see exactly what it is. Now, you will see on this, there are a couple that have higher levels than 0.7. And that's because these communities are naturally fluoridated. They are considered fluoridated. We have 11 million people in the United States on naturally fluoridated systems that there is no additional fluoride needed. Now, the first one in Abercrombie is above where we would like to see it because at two parts per million, 2.29, they can begin to get some of those brown stains be called se uh, severe dental fluorosis. But they are advised if they drink that water that kids under the age of eight is where this, this happens while the teeth are developing. They may want to use an alternate source of water <laughs> and it's called bottled water. Totally against it, but nonetheless, sometimes you may want to use it. Next slide, please. This is a uh, water quality report, a CCR it's called, from a city that reports the fluoride levels in the water. This is, this is uh, shout out to Bismarck and my buddy Jim Kershaw there. I took this from their 2019 water quality report. Again, it's mailed out to everyone once a year, like me, you, almost everybody throws in the trash because there's more information than I care to know. There are water operators are keeping us healthy and safe, and the EPA is making sure of that as well. Well, this is a report. When you look at the fluoride highlighted areas, they did their testing. They test it every day. But on this report, they give a date of what test it was done, when the test was done. The maximum amount that the EPA says can be in water and is still safe and has no health effects is at four parts per million, which is six times the 0.7 parts per million that's recommended by the U.S. Public Health Service. And in Bismarck, they reported that they had a level of 0.648. That is an acceptable level of fluoride in the water. The operating range for plants, they it's like driving a car down the highway at 70 miles an hour, like 0.7 parts per million. You're going to vary going up hills or mountains and vary your speed and going down. So they give an operational range to the water plants of 0.6 to 1.0. That is being implemented. The CDC has recommended that. And it's just being signed off on. So kudos to Bismarck. They are spot on and in the range of where water fluoridation cuts out at least 25%. And I will tell you up to 50% or more of cavities for children and adults. Next, please. Okay, I'll move into a clinical case presentation at this point. Am I doing okay on time? You have probably another 10 minutes before we should do the case presentation. Okay, well, this is the case presentation. Fabulous. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. And there is a question, if a family has only access to well water, is there a way to test the fluoride level or what should be the recommendation for their children? Again, water picks up fluoride as it comes through ground, uh, the rocks in, in the ground, igneous rocks, which make up the most of the top types of rock that we have in the ground, uh, granite, crystals, uh, uh, all sorts of rocks contain fluoride in them. And as the water erodes those rocks on its way to the surface through uh, into wells or into surface waters uh, through springs, that adds fluoride to the level that is in any water. You absolutely need to test uh, uh, wells. And the ones that I showed you before that were naturally fluoridated above 0.7 almost always are wells. Now you do need to check them because wells contain in this country up to 16 parts per million it has been found. And that is huge. Now you're gonna get brown stains, you're gonna get brittleness in the teeth 
uh, people are going to be happy, healthy, people in the same area drink the same water, even though above two parts per million there, it's recommended that they not do it because it will potentially cause brown stains for their kids when under the age of eight and their permanent teeth that are developing. But they all drink it. They all look the same. They get married. They have children. If their teeth have problems of brittleness, they get them fixed. So, in, in again, uh, 200,000 people in this country are on water systems, not water systems, because it's not allowed to be served in public systems if it is four parts per million or over. But they're drinking out of their wells that have four parts per million or more. And they're getting these brown stains hugely. So, yes, have your test water tested. Uh, I don't know if the state has a way to do that, but I will tell you that your your water plant will take a sample from you and test it. Use it, to test it in a plastic container, a plastic bottle, because glass bottles contain sand and fluoride. It, it will contain fluoride that will leach into your water that will give false results. So we will tell you, use a plastic bottle, and those are available. Um, the, the, from pharmacy stores, those little vials, like you put your travel um, uh, travel uh, condiments, like <laughs> head and shoulder shampoo that I used this morning. Uh, you put those things in it, use a plastic container, and you take it to them and talk nicely, and they will absolutely test it for you and get a report back to you telling you how much is in it. Then you, they will need to speak with you as healthcare providers and those that prescribe supplements if needed, whether you need a level of a supplement to raise what's in your water naturally to the optimal amount. Any other questions on that? Nope, that was it. Thanks, Johnny. You bet. Now, it's, it is critical to understand why people are opposed to water fluoridation. And it's, again, the buzzword is vaccine hesitancy, and fluoridation hesitancy. Uh, it's really opposition and there's levels of opposition to fluoridation. There are those who are hesitant because they actually believe that they have health problems that are truly caused by fluoride in water. And I have seen people that are on crutches and in wheelchairs because they drink fluoridated water. And I'll go into that in just a minute, one of my case histories. There are also those that, are, that have heard of public health measure, preventing measures like vaccines and fluoride, fluoridation, but they've read on Dr. Google that yeah, they're not good for you. And those sites used to come up as the top hits in a Google search. A funny thing happened on the way to the uh, measles outbreak in California afterwards. Uh, Google, um, Facebook, and uh, Twitter now decided we are not going to allow anti-false science to be promoted on our, our platforms. And so when they changed the algorithm so that anti-vax sites weren't the first nine out of 10 hits on a page when you searched it, you now have nine out of 10 directing you to the American Academy of Pediatrics, to other sites that are credible, CDC, National Institutes of Health. You may get one anti-vax site on the first page. Same with fluoridation. It blurred over into fluoridation the same way. You're talking about an angry group of people who oppose fluoridation and vaccinations. They were hostile and still are. They were going, go to DuckDuckGo because they don't track what you do. Well, I applaud the search engines for changing this. And that has helped get adequate, credible information to people first and foremost. Now, you also have those who are vehemently opposed to these two uh, um, public health measures. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I will tell you that the preventive health measures of vaccinations and fluoridation are tried and true. The science is clear. It's effective and they are not, they are very safe. They are not causing problems in anyone. 
but you can't say a word to someone who is dead set against it to change their minds. I will tell you that in my experience in fluoridation, and I do, I do battles across the country for our group, American Fluoridation Society, that when you have people that are vehemently opposed, you may influence one in a million. We want those that are in the middle on the on the ledge of asking to be the ones that we can get through to it's the same in vax things and i know you've heard so many different ways of doing it as we have in fluoridation but education chair side is the number one way that we immunize and inoculate a community uh, in vaccines and in fluoridation next I became president of this group, by the way, when we were forming our, our uh, board, five of us, healthcare professionals, four dentists, and a, a retired vascular surgeon. I went to the bathroom and I came back president for life and chief spokesperson. Again, this person that had anxiety disorder before, well, I got over it in my county and I welcome this role. There's a long list of false claims given by fluoridation opponents. None of them. I'm not going to read through these. But as I said, vaccinations, you'll get the same type of claims. And none of them are accurate. They are very good at pulling, uh, cherry picking tidbits of information from credible, credibly conducted uh, evidence based research that's been published in peer reviewed, credible journals. And then they will twist it, mix in their own opinions, throw it in a KitchenAid blender. They'll stir it up real good and then pour it out over an unsuspecting public. That's where the internet made this small group of people look very large. We have to be better. And that's how we're beating them at their own game. Next, please. Case number one. Now, let me tell you, when you have someone that truly believes their health issue has been caused by fluoridation. Number one thing is we know it's not. You want to say, look, the overwhelming body of evidence in a scientific research shows that that's not possible. That does not happen. But you have to show compassion because some people really believe it. And so you kind of give that compassion as a first step. Now, listen to them as we listen to our patients any other time. You want to learn because you don't want to automatically say something. Hey, I've heard this a thousand times. I know where you're going. Well, I ran for political office after they voted it out in my county and we got it back because I was sick and tired of politics being run like they were. I had no idea this would happen like this. I was totally naive. I attended a political meeting when I was running for office. This elderly woman came up to me in her wheelchair and she looked at me and shook her finger. And she said, you are the reason I'm in this wheelchair. Water fluoridation made me sick and my doctor told me so. I don't know what doctor would have said that, but nonetheless, I said empathetically, I said, you know, I'm sorry that you, uh, you've had this, uh, this uh, impact on your life from water fluoridation. And I kind of went in and described that, you know, the studies, although nothing is 100% accurate always, we find out by doing ongoing research, but your condition of not being able to walk once you drink fluoridated water is not supported by the evidence that's out there. She said, well, I know it did. And she shook her finger and said, you need to change it. And I said, ma'am, I said, it was a county commission that voted it back in. Uh, please make an appointment with them and go speak to them. So sometimes you have to fold your cards. That's a person you're not going to, not going to change. Next slide, please. I had a mother in my office. I'll call her Donna. Mom had two kids in my practice. Long, long time. She was a uh, drug rep. And she came to me. And she said, Johnny, she goes, uh, I went by Johnny, Dr. Johnny in my office. Uh, Johnny, I've got this. I heard on the fields at the baseball uh, field from all these mothers that they read online in the mommy blogs that fluoride is causing issues with the health of their kids and the health with the IQ issues 
And she goes, what can you tell me? And I gave her information and I asked for her to send me some of the information because when you ask to get their information that they're drawing conclusions from, you'll have a very good idea of the source of that information, which is almost always an anti-vax site or an anti-fluoridation site. Next slide, please. Donna came back. I had told her that my kids also use fluoride. We didn't have fluoridated water at the time, but we were giving fluoride supplements. Not a great choice. Not a 30% compliance with any, uh, any medication or fluoride supplement. Fluoride is not a medication. It's considered a uh, prescribable product because we have fluoride naturally existing in our water and we don't want our health professionals to overprescribe. And actually back in 2015, when the new levels came out uh, at 0.7 parts per million at the low end of the, of the range of 0.7 and 1.2 parts per million. And I can answer a reason for that if you wanna know why in just a minute, that at 0.7 parts per million, that 20% of our clinicians in this country were misprescribing fluoride supplements. A big point wasn't made out of it, but that's huge. Because that's saying our clinicians had not, were not aware of what their fluoride levels were or if they were even fluoridated. So they prescribed supplements. Well, Donna called me back after she went home to look up the articles and she said, I don't need to send them to you, Johnny. She goes, these are obscure sites. And she goes, I trust my kids in your hands like I trust them in my pediatrician's hands. She says, I know better, should never have listened. I'm a healthcare professional in my own field. Thanks, Johnny. We'll keep coming. We'll keep drinking fluoridated water once it starts. We'll keep taking our tablets. Next slide, please. This is someone who is opposed to fluoridation. I'll say she, her name is Julie. I almost called her her real name. Uh, her boys were in my practice for a long time. Now, she is... For religious belief, she's a Scientologist. I'm not throwing people into a into a um, um, religious issue. Uh, we have Jehovah's Witnesses that don't uh, believe in blood transfusions, but for her own personal reasons, she did not want her boys to have fluoride in the office. She did not use fluoridated toothpaste at home. Fluoride was bad for you. Of course, fluoride is not a panacea. We're, we want them to, everyone, to have a good balanced diet. You take care of your teeth at home. Uh, you come in for regular dental checkups. You get the sealants on your molars to smooth the crevices to help prevent cavities in them. But we also let them know that unless you use a fluoridated toothpaste, you are not protecting your teeth from cavities. Brushing alone has been shown in studies that it will not stop cavities. Now, her boys kept coming. She did agree to x-rays, which I would not see them if they did not agree to dental x-rays. And as time went on, they began to have some issues. Even though she didn't want to do these things, it's our job to continue to recommend preventive measures at each appointment. Next, please. Well, if you can see on the top right slide here, towards the gum line on the teeth, this wasn't her children but it's a picture like uh, Vanessa Bob showed before. There's little white etchings that follow the gum line. Those are early beginning cavities where the tooth, the calcium mineral has been leached out of the tooth because the plaque has been sitting there and producing acid. As I tell kids, I would say to kids, this, these are sugar bugs. And I would scrape it off and on my exploring show or to show it to them. And I said, these cavity bugs go poop on your teeth. And when they do that, they cause your teeth to get a hole in it. Well, the poop is the byproduct acid from the bacteria living within that plaque. So kids, you talk to a little differently than you would to the adults. But I would explain to the adults, say, this is what I said. So you know what we're talking about when, you, when they get home. But they're saying it's true. Well, her boys now were seven and nine years old. They began to get these areas on their teeth as well as on their x-rays. Showed it to mom. She finally said, Johnny, let's go ahead and do 
more frequent checkups? Do you think that'll help? I said, yes. If I saw them every day to clean their teeth, it still wouldn't make a difference. You, this is something that we need to use a topical fluoride, like a topical varnish, which God bless pediatricians and primary care providers from beginning that at uh, the first two coming in. You are helping to reduce a huge amount of cavities before they ever get to a dentist. She also agreed to start using a topical fluoride varnish twice a year. The boys were shown these, these areas as well, and they were understanding that those white spots were not good, and they were beginning to happen on some of their permanent teeth that began to erupt at age six. Next, please. Again, fluoridation in your state always chair side discuss fluoride and the water fluoridation fluoride if you don't have it in the water fluoridation if you do if you're not fluoridated discuss with the patient and the parent that they the kids are experiencing more cavities that than they would if your water was fluoridated if you have fluoridated water this is a 30 second discussion 30 seconds chair side you have a captive audience. If your community is fluoridated, say how lucky we are to have fluoride in our water because it helps protect us from cavities that we would be getting many, many of if we did not have fluoride in our water. Now, you still will get some cavities if your water is fluoridated and you don't take care of your teeth, but they're much smaller and they're much less severe. Again, well water, you need to get it checked because if it's on, if it has a high level or suboptimal levels, it needs to be taken care of. Number one thing is what you're doing by having those discussions and not, you're inoculating your community against challenges of fluoridation by that short conversation. Next, please. And Johnny, Here's, as you go over these resources, if you don't mind, just because I know some may log off in about three minutes when we've hit our one hour mark, are you okay if Julie okay. puts up the post question poll while you're yes. discussing the resources? Please, please. Fabulous. There, there are several resources for both water operators and also for um, uh, each of us that we can go to. And they are given on this webpage. The CDC has a plethora of information, not the easiest for all of us to go through and find. The American Fluoridation, our American Dental Association has a, a fabulous uh, uh, booklet called. American Dental Association uh, Fluoridation Facts. It is available online and it has all of the common questions, claims refuted and with the science references. The uh, American Academy of Pediatrics has a wonderful uh, set of resources and American Fluoridation Society has a huge, huge amount of information that will give you the information of studies that have been done that are being challenged by opponents with the correct information and scientific hyperlinks to where that information is happening.